What up, what up, what up, what up, NJ here, uh, host of the NJ podcast, and uh, I'm a speaker, author, creator, you know, and I just love having a lot of fun now. And I'm here to say, unequivocally, without any equivocation, without any hesitation, that I'm here to tell you that Michael Jordan is the greatest basketball player of all time. Here's, let me tell you why. He went six for six with six finals MVPs. He never allowed a game seven. And now these youngins are going to come and tell me that LeBron James is the greatest basketball player of all time. He lost four finals. He got swept twice, twice. And let's not talk about the 2011 finals, okay? Let's talk about the 2011 finals where he went to bed for four straight fourth quarters where he was guarded by Jason Terry and J.J. Berea. <laughs> uh, shout out to Stephen A. Smith. Now, that is when people are having, uh, trying to have this uh, de debate on who the greatest basketball player of all time. And also in the field of football, it goes crazy around Ballon d'Or season or World Cup season. Will you have people arguing and saying that Lionel Messi is the greatest football player of all time? Eight play eight Ballon d'Ors. But not only that, it's how he plays on the field and how he leads his team. He's won every single international trophy there is. Whereas there are some people who say that Cristiano Ronaldo is the greatest football player of all time, the highest goal scorer ever. He's done it in all, in, in, I think, what, three different leagues. Well, he's trying now in the Saudi Pro League. And this debate never seems to end. And then you also have the boxing uh, fanatics who some will say that Muhammad Ali is the greatest of all time. And some people may say quite blasphemously that Floyd Mayweather is the greatest boxer of all time. Come on now. And then you put all these different people and all these different camps in a room and the debate will go on forever. But these good debates are fun. I must say, these debates are a lot of fun to have. But from my perspective, I just want to look at why this GOAT debate, especially in the sports and the field of entertainment, especially in entertainment, some people are coming out and saying that Beyonce is great, better than Michael Jackson. Some people are killing those people who say that Beyonce shouldn't be considered in the same sentence as Michael Jackson. I don't know why that's even a, conf uh, a conversation to be have had. But these are very fun and passionate conversations that people can get killed. You can be murdered for having an opinion that's different to anybody else. And uh, while they're very fun, they're engaging, but a perspective that I want to share today on the show is that I think it's useless sometimes. I think this entire GOAT debate is completely useless and we're never going, we may not ever, ever get to a point where we all understand and universally agree on who the greatest of all time is in whatever field, whether it be boxing, whether it be football, whether it be basketball, uh, whether it be the NFL, whether it be music, dance, entertainment, DJs, music producers, uh, authors, actors, we may never ever get. But we all love these top 10 lists, right? But Because we have this uh, innate need to have somebody first. But I want to share a couple of perspectives as to why the GOAT debate is ultimately useless. The first one I've got here is subjectivity. Subjectivity. Can, I'm not sure that there is a universally agreed upon criteria for which determines who the greatest of all time is, right? Because a lot of... Uh, these factors, they're all subjective they're to different people. Some people consider statistical achievements, uh, personal values, impact on the sports or in the field. And even sometimes nostalgia is a very, very, very big uh, impact onto how some people view who the greatest of all time is. And that renders this goat debate sometimes useless. Let's go back to the basketball debate, right? In the 90s, some people will review the will view the '90s as the greatest era of basketball without question, right? <laughs> look at that and say, look, it was a tougher league. It was better defenses, and it was it was very hard. The Eastern Conference was hard, and Michael Jordan stopped I think something like 36 Hall of Famers from re getting a ring. He three peated twice, and then there was a Space Jam, and then there was the shoes, and there was a culture of hip hop, and then those are the people who who are quite aged. 
and then I say age it, they've been around longer than some people. Uh, then those people who are LeBron enthusiasts, LeBron James enthusiasts, who grew up a little bit later on. So that nostalgia hits them because they believe that LeBron is the greatest in their era. And all of these uh, uh, criteria said tend to be subjective. I'm not too sure we can all agree on what are the objective criteria that we can use to determine who the greatest of all time is. So the first point about why the GOAT debate is useless is subjectivity. The next point I'd like to share is that there are different eras and different contexts. Different eras and different contexts. Now, like comparing different athletes in different eras is a bit difficult to do because it's not like we can take players from today put them in a time machine and then ship them back to the 50s or the 60s where they, they, they can play. Now, you have to understand there's different socioeconomic impacts, there's different technologies and different rules and different um, ways of playing. So, for example, let's take basketball uh, as an example because this is where the GOAT debate gets really heated. Let's take uh, basketball. Back in the 1950s and 60s, where Bill Russell and the Celtics went on and won something like 11 championships in 13 years, it was a completely different era. You had less players in the league, you had less teams in the league, and you had less uh, playoff games in the league. So then now, Bill Russell went and won 11. And then now we move into the ni- go move to the 90s era where you've got different rules and different players and uh, people are more athletic and there's more technology and uh, there was a bit more money involved. Now in today's era, uh, in the 2020s, there's a lot more money and people are a lot more athletic and people view the games a lot more. And some people say it's quote unquote softer. Now, the problem with uh, com- trying to compare different eras is that you never will ever really know. It's not like we can uh, put LeBron James versus Michael Jordan's teams to play each other in their prime right now. We will never actually know. Some people say that uh, Steph Curry's Warriors would beat the 1996 uh, Chicago Bulls. We'll never really know. So that is why it's very difficult for us to say definitively who the greatest of all time is because statistically and in terms of the way the game is played, we will absolutely never know. Michael Jordan, who's considered the greatest uh, basketball player to have ever played, when he was asked about this GOAT debate, he talked about this whole uh, comparing of of different eras and different contexts. He said that uh, him being called the greatest player of all time, basketball player of all time, is a bit disrespectful to uh, Oscar Robinson, Will Chamberlain, um, Jerry West, uh, Elgin Baylor, Bill Russell all those players because he never had a chance to play against them and he will never will have a chance uh, to play against them because it's different contexts and different eras. You know what I mean? So if we would look at the, the football uh, analogies, if we look at, for example, the Ballon d'Or, the Ballon d'Or in football is used a lot to judge who is the greatest uh, football player alive within a calendar year. Back in the 1950s and 60s and 70s and 80s, even up until the mid-90s, no player who was playing outside of Europe was eligible to win the Ballon d'Or. So that's why guys like Pele and Maradona were not able to win it. Versus in today's era, everybody's eligible to win it. So because Messi has eight and uh, Pele didn't have any Ballon d'Ors, that means Pese, uh, Messi is better than uh, Pele. We'll never actually know. So that's why this GOAT debate is becomes a bit useless because we'll never actually know because it's different eras, man. Then one, th- one of the, the reasons why we will never really have a definitive GOAT is the lack of universal criteria. Like in order for us to have a great a grace of all time, everybody in this discussion will have to agree on who is the greatest of all time according to set criteria. So then now, there's no universally accepted criteria or metrics to measure greatness across all fields. For example, in, in basketball, people, will use, do they use points? Do they use championships? Do they use team play? Do they use team chemistry? And all of these universal criteria, they seem to shift and they seem to change over time according to the, according to the debates that are, are being had. Uh, some people may value longevity. Let's take it back to the basketball debate. You know, I've been watching a lot of basketball videos and uh, getting into that. So let's take let's take basketball. So then LeBron James has played, I think, about twenty seasons now. The longevity is insane. But so did Kareem Abdul Abdul Jabbar. But then, are we going to take that longevity? Are we going to say longevity is a criteria? Some people say yes. Some people say no. Some people say the impact over the time that you played your peak it determines who the greatest is. So based on this lack of universal criteria, my view 
it means that we will never really know who the greatest of all time is. We can only uh, uh, speculate, right? Then another reason why I feel the GOAT debate is really moot and not productive and we'll never get there because it's predicated on sometimes diminishing other people's achievements, right? So then you'll say, for example, we'll take Cristiano Ronaldo and Lionel Messi. It's very hot. It's, it's very debated. And so people will say Messi's the best or Ronaldo's the best. But then those two sets of fans, they will look to diminish another player's uh, achievements. Why is it that we cannot just accept that we have great players. We live. We are watching the greatest era uh, of the greatest uh, players. They are playing together, and we cannot just accept and appreciate the players playing. Because when these two legends retire, it's going to be a very sad day for all of football, right? So, but then I don't know what it is about human beings and human nature always having to be a number one. We cannot uh, seem to just not only. Just accept that this is a great player, but we always want to diminish another person's achievements. And that is why the, the good debate is a bit useless, because you always have to tear down somebody else. You can't just say, this player is great, but this player, player, said, player is always great, right? Uh, the other reason that I feel that this good debate is really not going to take us anywhere is because this is infinite loop, right? Goat means greatest of all time. Say it again. It means greatest of all time. The last time I checked, time has not ended. We are still living. So in 10 years from now, we may have, be having different conversations of who the greatest of all time is in basketball or football. We may be having a different conversation on who the greatest of all time is in different fields because 10 years from now, we have fresh talent, we, new criteria may evolve, new rules may evolve, new ways of playing may evolve. We may never actually know who the greatest of all time is because it's an infinite loop. We've got new players, we've got new talent, we've got new ways of working and it's just going to be an infinite loop until time ends, until Jesus Christ comes back and stops all time. We will never actually know who the greatest of all time is, right? Then also, we've got the sixth reason why the greatest of all time is, is absolutely useless. I'll tell you why. It is emotional bias. A lot of emotional bias goes into the greatest of all time debate. I mean, like in the 90s, with kids who grew up in the 90s, people who grew up in the 90s, from a basketball perspective, will unequivocally, without any hesitation, tell you that Michael Jeffrey Jordan is the greatest basketball player of all time. It's not even close to them. It's not even close. He went six for six with six finals in MPs. He never even allowed a game seven. He shut you down before he got there. You know, then they'll be referencing Space Jam. I love Space Jam. Personally, I like Space Jam 2 wasn't that great for me, but Space Jam was really great. And then it was the culture, it was the shoes, it was the hip hop, and it was also the lack of social media where, where you saw Michael J. Jordan play and then you didn't see any highlights the next day, which goes back to the point about different eras and different contexts, right? So a lot of people will look at everything that they went through from an emotional perspective. And human beings are emotional creatures. And once they're imbued in emotion, it's very difficult for you to get them out of that emotion. So a lot of people have this emotional bias. For example, like when it comes to Lionel Messi, a lot of people have got a lot of emotional attachment to him winning. I was one of them. In fact, I am one of them, unapologetically so. I was so emotionally invested in him winning the 2022 FIFA World Cup that it was heart-wrenching and gut-wrenching for me to watch that final. When he won, I fell on the floor unashamedly and I cried for 15 minutes straight. That's right, I said it. 15 minutes straight, I cried for 15 minutes straight because I put my life and my story into his story at an emotional perspective to say, Lionel Messi, you have to win because I want to see someone finish the game of football. 
So from that perspective, if I'm always emotionally imbued, I'm always going to argue that Lionel Messi is the greatest football player of all time. And it's going to be very difficult for me to say five years, 10 years, 15 years from now, if somebody eclipses objectively, he's, uh, well, according to what objective criteria we have, eclipses his achievements, I'm still going to be hanging on to the emotional ties that I have to emo- Lionel Messi winning the 2022 World Cup. A lot of people still feel that way about Maradona. They feel that Maradona is the greatest uh, football player to them until it took a monumental effort from Lionel Messi to win. And this emotional bias is not going anywhere. There will always be a hint of emotional bias. Some people may be emotionally attached to LeBron James or uh, Steph Curry, or they may be uh, emotionally invested in Muhammad Ali. For me, from a boxing perspective, I love Muhammad Ali, so it's very difficult for anyone to come tell me that Floyd Mayweather is the greatest boxer of all time or Shuri Robinson is the greatest boxer of all time for me because I'm so emotionally invested in Muhammad Ali as an athlete and what he meant and what he stood for, what he achieved. For me, it's very difficult for me to say that anyone is a greater boxer than Muhammad Ali. So that emotional bias renders this greatest of all time conversation moot. And then the seventh and the last one is that this whole greatest of all time debate, it neglects team effort and the system and the players, coaches, strokes of luck that are involved in helping that player win and succeed. So Cancel Court is a very, very great series for you to go watch online if you get a chance for you to do so. So basically, it's an improv comedy show where you've got a mock uh, courtroom, you've got a judge, you've got a bailiff, you've got a jury, and you've got two lawyers, and they're making the case for who the greatest of all time is. In the basketball context, we've got Ryan Davis, I believe, and Tony Baker, and they're arguing for LeBron James and Michael Jeffrey Jordan, respectively. So in the part two, it's very funny. Please go watch it. <laughs> I'll drop a link. Please go watch it. So for so Ryan Davis, who is a very masterful debater, he uses a lot of stats and data and uh, uh, background information. Tony Baker, love him. He's so funny. Uh, so Ryan Davis, in his closing argument in the second uh, part of Cancel Court. He said that Michael Jordan is a great player, but we neglect the system around him that allowed him to be successful. For example, he had a great def- defensive players, and I believe it was Horace Grant as well as uh, Donis Redman, R- Rodman. They were great offensive rebounders, and they were very great uh, just rebounders, period. And then you had great shooters such as Tony Kukoc as well as uh, Steve Kerr who all all, all shot 50% from the field. And you had Scotty Pippen who allowed, who was also a great player in his own right. And then you had Phil Jackson who created a a great system around him to win. And then you remove that system, Michael Jordan doesn't win a championship. That's what the argument is. And that brought to my, my mind to say, we will elevate a player, but we will forget about the we'll forget about the system that was around them that allowed them to win because this is a team effort. This is a team sport. And so we neglect other people's uh, achievements, you know? So that is why I believe that this is very difficult for you to... It's very difficult for us to get to who the greatest of all time debate. We can go back to, to football and look at a player that I believe is completely underrated. Angel Di Maria. Di Maria is an Argentine player. He played with Cristiano Ronaldo and Lionel Messi. He won every trophy that they won, not individually, but from a team trophy. He scored in the World Cup final. He scored in the Copa America final. He scored in the Finalissima. And he also is a gold medalist. And I believe he won the under-17 under World Cup, I believe. He is such an underrated uh, contributor and a player. And we, uh, we undermine his contributions to the game and helping Lionel Messi win as well. And then also, let, let's, let's go back to the 2022 World Cup. 2014 World Cup. Here's why Lionel Messi won the 2014 World Cup. And this is why I'm not too sure how Gonzalo Higuain can live with himself. <laughs> I'm kidding. So in 2014, in the final, Lionel Messi could have won that match. He easily could have won that match. But he didn't. Why did he not win that match? Gonzalo Higuain missed a one-on-one chance against Manuel Neuer. So then if Higuain wins that one-on-one, scores that goal, Lionel Messi is the greatest of all time 
to some people a decade ago. And then now in, tw- in, the, in the World Cup 2022, yes, Lionel Messi was great. Yes, he was a man of the match. Yes, he was phenomenal. By far the best player on the on on the court, on the court, but say court, on the field. However, he were, had a great supporting cast in terms of Enzo Fernandez and that boy Julian Alv- Alvarez. And then we cannot forget how uh, Emilio Dibu Martinez saved two penalties in the final, and he saved that one on one against Kolo Mwani. Had he scored, France wins. But he saved it, and he saved those two penalties. Everyone did play their part, and he won. Lionel Messi and Argentina won the FIFA 22 World Cup. So this whole greatest of all time debate sometimes doesn't take into consideration all the other contributing factors that allow people to win. Okay, so that is why I... uh, Those are the seven reasons that I believe that the GOAT debate is sometimes... Is useless. It's a lot of fun. I love having this debate and I love saying inflammatory things just to get people's reactions <laughs> in on it. I remember last year saying that if LeBron James won the chip last year, he's the greatest of all time, no question. I was, de- I, they demolished me on, on social media, but I say stuff like that just to get a rise out of them. So that is why I believe, from my perspective, that the greatest of all time debate is sometimes useless because of subjectivity we played in different eras uh, lack of the universal agreed criteria uh, it tends to diminish other people's achievements there's an infinite loop and there's emotional bias and it also tends to negate other people's team efforts it negates team efforts so that is that is my take on why the goat debate is useless and i will see you on the next episode tell me who you think who is the greatest football player of all time who is the greatest basketball player of all time who is the greatest uh, boxer of all time just who is the greatest of all time just you know let's have that discussion and have that debate I love having people on the show so we can have these debates on it but uh, for me Maybe I'll share who the my my take on who the greatest of all time and all the different fields on in a different episode and different show. But thank you very much. Uh, also, yes, remember that success is the greatest. Uh, is success is the progressive realization of where that deal. That means you're going after what you've always wanted to go after because it's aligned with your highest values, and that's the only way for you to live a truly fulfilled life. And we will see you on the next episode.